This is uh, the more interesting and beautiful group of Chalcedony. It's about agate and banded agate. So this is uh, the only real agate because the, the word was defined for um, Chalcedony with, with bands. So all the other uh, Chalcedony with inclusion that we usually call agate are mm, in sensu latu. So this is sensu stricto. So we see moss agate, plume agate, dendritic agate, and sagenitic, and now we will see uh, the banded agate. This group is the more collectible, and uh, there is a lot of mm, uh, things that we can talk about banded agate, so it's a very long theme, and we will divide it in three chapter, chapter three different videos. So this is what mm, I how appear a banded agate. Um, the best piece are colorful and fully banded. So there is banding from uh, outside to, to the inside. But most are um, a mix of quartz, chalcedony with inclusion and other stuff. So they are considered a rock and not a mineral. But we know this is a real special stone. In, in any case. So, um, what what is the ostrock of a uh, banded agate? Where they grow, where they are found. So, uh, actually, any rock can be ostrock for for an agate if there is a cavity. The most common agate are in basalt, and uh, sometimes in intermediate lava like andesite, but uh, uh, basalt are more common, uh, commonly uh, with uh, big uh, vesicle, big cavity. So th this is the reason because it's the most important ostrock for, for agate. But <coughs> any volcanic rock is good for host and agate, but also sedimentary rock. Uh, mm, there is many agates that are found in limestone and other kind of sedimentary rock. Uh, also, fossil can uh, proportion can, also can offer a cavity for um, uh, host uh, uh, an agate. So, a petrified wood can have inside, in the center, sometimes some some cavity with banded chalcedony. The dino bone, when especially big bone like tibia. Uh, can have a, a big cavity in the middle, but also some other kind of fossil, like a shell in this case. Uh, what is the shape of an agate? Shape, as as we see before, the typical host rock is basalt, and when uh, agate is found in basalt, this is the typical shape. It's called amygdaloid. Mm that means with shape of an almond and uh, usually mm, the almond have the point toward the toward 45 degree uh, down so mm, this is the, sh the shape of a bubble in inside the basalt the basalt deformed by the movement of the lava lava flow so this is the direction of movement and the uh, the point uh, is toward the back of the flow. So this is the typical shape in basalt, but can be uh, more rounded if the flow was very slow or, or nothing. Also, it is very common to find agate in vein, in fracture, in rocks, and in some cases when the vein uh, are abundant and cross each other, or in some breccia, when there is many intersection between different uh, fractures, so you can find <coughs> some nodule with more or less triangular shape. Also, um, a shape for an agate is the fissure inside the tundra. So, this is a typical star shape or butterfly shape that is uh, the filling of the fracture inside the nodule that uh, consists of the tundra. A uh, really strange 
um, specimen is found in Brazil. Uh, there is a deposit of agate called polyedroid because they are mm, with real polyedroid shape and when cut it they show usually uh, triangular or squared shape and this is possible due because they grow in between um, big sheet like shaped crystal of anhydrite but this is not sure because we, we, we never found the trace of the crystals but it is a very uh, unusual deposit it is found just in one place in Brazil so this is the shape of the agate that can be 5-10 cm until 40-50 cm big and is quite abundant another shape very common is limb cast that is uh, the filling of uh, the cavity lived by a cast uh, a piece of tree but just a small piece of tree is not um, able to fossilize so the, the organic matter is mm, disappear and uh, just leave the void that is uh, used by the agate to make a banded agate and also another fossil in this guy in this case a gastropod that also can give cavity for for an agate okay the, the typical agate is not only banding banding but is structured with mm, different mm, element inside the nodule so mm, there is a first chalcedony all around uh, stick to the wall of the cavity and, and uh, uh, with often some moss or other inclusion at the base then there is the banded portion and in, in many cases we have uh, a center of made of crystalline quartz this is the more common case but we can have a reverse situation like mm, an agate all uh, rounded by quartz so is grow after the quartz is fully inside and in this case collector call it floater like is a suspended uh, floater without contact with, with the cavity wall so this is the general case but there is many different situations so um, taking the, the general case we try to divide the uh, content of an agate nodule in four uh, facies or kind of structure so the first structure is the first first chalcedony layer that is a kind of sheet of chalcedony clear chalcedony that is all around uh, the nodule and is separating the uh, the inside uh, from the ostrock so uh, the banding is start only when is uh, separated uh, by a also thin uh, bed of clear chalcedony layer. This chalcedony is mm, where all the inclusion are contained. So plume, moss, and saginate are, are all inside faches one. Uh, Faches 2 is banding. Banding is in three different uh, structures. First structure is hemiagate, that is a kind of um, half circle banded, but just few hemiagate appear uh, lying above the chalcedony layer and um, mm. are uh, a quite rare structure. Uh, present only in few deposits and not in all deposits. Then we have two kind of banding: the horizontal banding and the concentric banding. The horizontal is usually found at the base of the cavity, and the concentric banding is often found in the upper portion. They are not uh, always present. Sometimes there is only one. Or of the two and uh, um, not always the faches 
to C is later than the fase, fase 2B. So this is not chronological. Um, after that, there is um, a facies consisting of white opal that is often uh, found in this situation and uh, at the end there is quartz, uh, crystalline quartz that is follow followed by uh, void, just the cavity. So this is the normal situation. We will try to, to, f to get more detail of each one. So the first calcedony layer is exactly the same we studied for mm, chalcedony with inclusion is the portion that contain moss pendant moss grow on all around on the cavity wall and can fall down for this reason mm, one very common case is that the first chalcedony layer have been a little bit diluted the moss are folded down and we found uh, the band dagat in the upper portion and the lower portion is constituted by moss. So the first calcedony layer is very thin in the upper portion and very thick in the lower portion. And the, and the band dagat uh, is always in the upper portion. And this is the band dagat, the first facies that represent a kind of low nucleation at the beginning of the banding. Low nucleation uh, is because um, probably the colloidal solution is too dense, too, too much uh, uh, viscous for, um, fi for the crystallization to continue. So it starts from some point at the contact between mm, the first calcedony layer. This is the first calcedony layer, it's in red, it's a small one without inclusion, and the amiagat is on above it. And uh, uh, we see that uh, amiagat are characteristic of few deposits. One of them is Waldenbach in Germany, Wave Hill in Australia, and few more. It's possible to find any anyway, but it's common in few places. Um, the Emiagat, uh, if if you look in from outside, uh, this is pebble river washed from China, and you can see the structure of Emiagat like an eye. These eyes are the, the crossed, uh, so the first carcinoma layer has been removed and you can see the inner side, inner side of the amiagat. A um, sp really special structure of uh, a kind of amiagat is the conoid. Conoid are found very rarely and is a type of amiagat that grow above the first calcedony layer but when mm, this calcedony layer is still growing. So the, the emiagata start to grow in a small point and when continue to grow, the lateral calcedony also continue to grow and give no, give no, uh, leave, you have not the possibility the emiagata to be flat but take the shape of a conoid. Okay, uh, the second banding structure is horizontal banding. Horizontal banding is quite common, but not in all deposit is present. Some mm, some deposit never have um, on flat uh, or horizontal banding, like for example Laguna never found with horizontal banding. Mm. In some deposit are very common, but it's very rare to find uh, nodules like this that are completely filled by horizontal banding. So the more common situation is that the horizontal banding mm, con constitue, uh, occupy the half lower part of the nodule while uh, concentric banding is on the upper portion of the nodule, like this case. Or uh, if we have not uh, concentric banding, 
other stuff like quartz. Um, horizontal banding is very common also in tundraic. So it's quite clear that the uh, horizontal banding is controlled by gravity uh, because the the flattening is so perfect that is clearly uh, horizontal and this is uh, a good way to to have an idea of the orientation the original orientation of the nodule in the in its deposit so uh, this is the concentric banding and the difference between horizontal banding and concentric banding is clearly the gravity so when um, horizontal banding is strongly controlled by gravity so the solution is more diluted in the case of concentric banding the solution is more more sticky and more dense and can be sticked to the wall of the cavity so <coughs> the band um, stick all around in the cavity can be the band more or less flat or linear shape like in this guy this case or can occupy the uh, cavity that is lived free by the first chalcedony layer like in this mm, nodule that occupy a uh, good portion of the of the cavity in in the case that uh, the first chalcedony layer have a strong botroidal surface um, we have that the band have a uh, um, segmented uh, shape that is called fortification agate. The fortification is because it remember that um, very old uh, castle that have this kind of uh, map, uh, this kind of shape. And this depend in part, but, but also from other factors that we will see later, depend in part from the botroidal um, shape of the first calcedony layer like in this um, this geode uh, filled by calcedony and of course if we fill this by an, an agate would be um, well segmented okay so the three uh, structure of facies 2 mm, can be a, a sequence of uh, facies uh, representing ad, an increasing of solution. So at the beginning we have low nucleation that we say depend from the high density of the colloid solution. This is quite different from normal hydrothermal solution uh, we know from mineralogy that usually have um, low nucleation when there is few solute in the solution. In this case mm, is is uh, is not the lack of, of solute uh, but is the very dense solution, very sticky. Uh, the solution is always sticky but a little bit more easy to crystallize when the uh, the calcedony leave a full band all around the cavity stick it to the wall but uh, uh, it's evident that when uh, horizontal banding occur the solution have been uh, diluted so uh, a kind of external mm, input of water is necessary to pass from these patches to these patches. So we know that at this phase when start uh, to to form uh, the banding in agate the nodule uh, have been insulated from the host rock by the first calcedony layer. So the solution flow inside very very slowly uh, from the porosity of the first calcedony layer. So this is almost a closed system. Um, so the, the three uh, structure are uh, a representation of the same process with more and more diluted uh, 
solution. So uh, there is not uh, a real mineralogical change, but just uh, is the same phenomena with more mon more water. And then we have the last two fudges, uh, less important, but mm, are quite common. One is white topal that is can be found in two different situations inside nodules. At the base of the nodule is usually massive and with crack of desiccation crack very similar to that we see in Jasper and uh, at the the boundary between mm, Chalcedony and Dopal we can see some nucleation of um, spherical uh, globular Chalcedony that start to grow inside the opal so there is a disequilibrium of opal that is replaced by mm, by Chalcedony the other place uh, is uh, inside the, the last cavity of the nodule and is before the crystallization of quartz and th in this case uh, the structure of opal is uh, with, with small dune this kind uh, of opal is always white with no color and uh, um, is not uh, uh, too much representative of the mm, evolution of the nodule so we don't know too much about these fudges then the last uh, um, fudges is quartz quartz is often at, at the end of the crystallization at the center of the nodule in many cases is amethyst but mm, it's not necessary it can be transparent or white and uh, mm, in many cases is also interbedded between calcedony so we can see like in this agate from brazil this is heated and we see two beds of quartz interbedded between calcedony also in this dry head that is a sedimentary agate we can see many bed many bands constituted just by quartz so it's not another thing, it's a uh, fudges that is interbedded and mixed with calcedony. Okay, if we analyze in detail mm, the binding, we can find that um, there is not just one kind of band, but there is three kinds of band. Mm, and the three kinds of band uh, stay in sequence. One uh, both the other one uh, after the other so um, the the banding consists of three different uh, fudges sub fudges this is mm, the fudges uh, two the banding that can be uh, concentric or horizontal but the the bands are constituted by three uh, three kinds of minerals one is globular chalcedony this globular chalcedony is transparent and is hydrated this is all the portion that have the color of the, the nodule and when you dye uh, uh, an agate uh, a grey agate without too much color mm, all the dye uh, impregnate this portion because the if the color is uh, water soluble um, we mm, it enter inside the place where there is water in this calcedony so this calcedony is hydrated and transparent and the structure is more or less uh, laminated but at the base this lamination is more uh, neat more defined and consist of mm, small globular uh, structure so if we continue to follow a lamina we can see that laterally the lamina can be mm, uh, detached in that pass laterally in into a globular structure separated itself so the same passage is from base to top from bed definite 
globular structure that start to become more continuous and then to real lamination. It's important not to uh, confuse laminas with from band. So one band consists of many lamina. This is a very, very microscopic structure, but all of this is a band. So the other structure inside bands is fibrous chalcedony. Fibrous chalcedony is, is not transparent, it's white. And this anhydrous. So this is fully crystalline chalcedony. Mm, the crystals are fibrous, but are uh, fully microcrystalline. In this case, there is, there is not water or just few water. And mm, if you dye the agate, this portion doesn't take the color because it's crystalline. The same as quartz doesn't take the, co the color is crystalline. Okay, the quartz is always at the top. This is a sequence and in geology the, reco reco recognition, the recognition of a sequence to is very important to understand the uh, behavior, uh, the genetic behavior of this phenomenon. But um, like in turbidite for example is a sequence of fatches the most difficult stuff is recognize where is the base and where is the top. So if we have a complete sequence, S1, S2, S3, and we have globular uh, chalcedony at the base and quartz at the top, we know that this is the top. And the next sequence of the band start again with globular chalcedony. In this case, and only in, in this case, is quite easy to un to distinguish a sequence. But if is qua if quartz is absent, or also if fibrous chalcedony is absent, um, this mm, can be a more difficult sequence. Can be S1, S2, S1, S2 is a little bit more complicated if S2 is very thin, that is a common situation, and also if S2 doesn't exist, so we have a sequence of S1, 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 and in, in this case it's a little bit more difficult to understand where a fatches, where a, a band uh, uh, ends and starts the new band. So um, the, the way to distinguish is to find some structure typical of the base or of the top, like quartz and other structure, we will see. Um, it's very important to understand that there is a change in, in uh, there is no change in composition, but there is a very strong change in rheology, because uh, globular chalcedony, because it's hydrated and is very sticky, is plastic and is a polymer but uh, the fibrous chalcedony is crystalline so this this is rigid so um, many of the uh, theory about agatha suppose that um, there is strong deformation inside inside agatha but uh, we know from this scheme that uh, the formation is impossible when it imply the formation of th th this, these bands, because quartz is crystalline and cannot be deformed, and the fibrous chalcedony also cannot be deformed. Only few small deformations are possible in this part of the bands. So this is a very small deformation, a small scale deformation. And this is a very important concept. Okay, uh, this is a rear real case this is a, a, a scheme a sequence but I this is a real case uh, draw from from a specimen we see from the base is kind of crypto crystalline not so well definite micro crystalline is fibrous is here and then more mm, crystalline more fully crystalline is the quartz on the top so this is a sequence of the band and this is real, is not uh, an, imagi uh, an imagination. 
So this sequence is very important to understand all what's happened inside Agat. And uh, if you analyze from a mineralogical point of view, um, this is a sequence of crystallization. So there is increasing of crystallinity from base to top, so from mm, polymer to microcrystalline to, to crystalline quartz, and there is a decreasing in, um, in water, so from hydrous to totally hydrous. So um, there is a decreasing in silica content of the water, so this is uh, from a colloidal solution and this is more diluted solution that give the pore of these crystals and this is fully uh, diluted solution that give uh, the possibility to, to grow quartz so we can understand from this that uh, the, the position of this sequence is one event that mm, uh, uh, transform a colloidal solution in a diluted solution by subtracting uh, solute so we have a very dense solution we mm, keep some silica we leave a more diluted solution we keep another part of silica and we leave just the rest that is diluted solution that can crystallize normal quartz okay we try to apply this <coughs> to a, a real nodule so this is S1 that is transparent with uh, the colors. So all the green is in the S1 uh, bands. S2 is clearly evident uh, with very white bands. Here uh, is more thick. There is a repetition of the sequence, but we will see in more detail this nodule. But it's easy to distinguish S1 and S2 in, in a nodule, very very easy so S2 have constant thickness because is um, fiber of crystal one mm, beside the other so have the very very constant si thickness S1 have a very uh, strong lateral change in thickness we can see this mm, set of lamina uh, of S1 that go to this direction is become very very big also this portion become mo smaller in this direction so the, the change in thickness is due mm, only to the S1 fudges the, uh, the uh, globular chalcedony ok we see another case we can see that S1 is uh, more or less transparent with red dot these are color center we will see later how they um, they are formed but uh, we see all the color is here in the S1 the S2 is completely white rarely is little bit red and is fibrous with the fiber perpendicular to the band so sometimes the S2 is very thin sometimes is bigger but it's always very easy, easy to distinguish in this other mm, specimen we can also see the globular chalcedony contain all the color with the shape of small red dot and the S2 the fibrous chalcedony is here a really fibrous band and S3, that is quartz band, is um, see like a very undulated surface. So this is the quartz, and this is the point um, looking toward the center of the cavity. So this is another uh, quartz band, always looking in the direction of the inside. Okay. Um, some bands um, have many lamina inside so this is our mm, group of lamina that are really consistent of just one S1 fudges and this is S2 uh, uh, bands that lie uh, upward 
to this one. So this is, we can count thousand of lamina inside, but is quite uh, just small uh, one sm one band. And uh, mm, when it's shaky, there is we say that there is quartz. In this case, we have ten uh, sequence S1, S2, S3. Uh, this is a way to to describe the, the the banding. So there is ten sequence complete, and we if we see with a little bit more close up, we can see uh, any of this sequence have quartz on the top. And mm, from far it's possible to to understand that there is quartz because the line is very shaky. Okay. Um, the S2 mm, is mm, sometimes not so evident and uh, there is some case that uh, um, this is mostly um, an alternation of S1 and S2 but S2 is very thin white mm, mm, uh, band uh, but with low nucleation and forms small circular structure so this is so mm, in transparency but if we cut mm, we can see just a small uh, dot of white material and not always are so well continued like in this in this specimen. So this is also an alternation of S1, S2 and this is also an alternation F1, S2 but S2 in many cases has been um, reabsorbed or is not so continued like, like in this case so um, we have to realize that uh, the uh, the description of the sequence in some cases is a little bit more complicated. Okay, now we try to um, explain uh, the origin of horizontal banding. We can see that concentric and horizontal band can uh, coexist in the same uh, nodule and also that a single band can be uh, concentric in the upper portion and horizontal in the lower portion so this would mean that is more sticky here and more diluted here it's quite strange but it's more strange again in this sample when the same uh, band is um, horizontal in the right side of the nodule and uh, start to, to grow up in the left side of the nodule. So mm, it's not complete uh, horizontal because he at, at the middle of the nodule start to, to change his behavior. So for understand this we have to look at some specimen and we can see that uh, many uh, nodule have show the association of horizontal banding with stalactite. So not always horizontal banding have stalactite but always when there is stalactite there is horizontal banding. And this can be explained easily if we uh, if we imagine that a uh, concentric banding is sticked on the wall of the cavity and then a dilution um, is responsible then the the, uh, the concentric banding can start to drip down to form stalactite and the stalactite drop uh, some more diluted material forming a kind of lake at the base of the cavity so uh, what are the horizontal bands they are the result of diluting of concentric band and the stalactite are in some case witness of what happened but in many cases most of the case stalactites disappear and we have only the uh, horizontal band so 
we can say that uh, horizontal bunting is the result of a secondary dilution. We can see now mm, an example. This is a Tanderek from Oregon, a sample where <coughs> some band mm, pass from concentric to horizontal. If we see the thickness of the bands, we see that some band uh, that are thin in the concentric band become, become very thick in the horizontal band. So there is an increasing in thickness of the bands from when it is sticked to the wall of the cavity at when it uh, flow down forming an horizontal band. So in this case we can uh, retake the sequence of the band that if uh, the globular chalcedony, fibrous chalcedony and quartz. And we know that Fibrous calcedony and quartz are rigid, are crystalline, cannot be deformed. So only the globular calcedony is plastic and, and can be deformed. And if we see here the wide band, for example this, have a constant thickness from horizontal banding to concentric banding. And only the globular calcedony change in thickness from from the wall of the cavity to the small lake formed by the dripping, by the flowing down of the globular calcium. So this is what happens when uh, the dripping is not concentrated in, in stalactite, stalactite from the roof, but is a kind of uh, secondary flowing of just one of the three um, Fatches of the uh, sequence of the bands. Okay, if we have uh, a flat bands, then we can uh, continue to um, crystallize concentric banding by but using the flat band as a wall of the ca cavity. That means if we uh, stop the dilution in this moment we can continue to have a flat surface but uh, associated to a uh, concentric band so this surface is flat only because um, is uh, inherited, inherited from from the lake that was just formed but so also we, we can see that the uh, crystal um, the crystal structure uh, is more uh, it's more crystalline the structure of the horizontal banding so there is less color and in the case of um, a concentric banding there is more color of material so all the the nodule we see before have more color in the portion that is um, as, uh, that they, they show the concentric banding and is more white or gray when is the flat horizontal banding but um, when uh, um, the, ori the concentric banding start again we can have some kind of concave horizontal banding so uh, this is a kind of change from real horizontal banding to a concentric banding and we will see, we, we can see that mm, the color start to, to be here. So where is real horizontal banding is without color. And when it st we start to make concentric banding, we have color. Again, we have less color and uh, again more color. So mm, the uh, alternation of horizontal to concentric banding is quite strong and mm, this imply a, a change of color if we come back a little moment here here we can see that mm, yeah we can see that uh, all the um, 
the uh, horizontal banding are less colored than the concentric banding. So in this nodule, all the colored is concentrated in the upper portion with concentric banding. This is white, this is white, this is green. And in this nodule, also the red portion is in the concentric banding, and this is gray. And this is heated, but mm, all of them would be gray. So horizontal banding is always gray to white. We go back <laughs> to our slide. So we know now that also here all the color is all around and the this is a secondary color, but this is gray. Okay, so we, we was here we can uh, analyze what happened in the in the horizontal banding and we can see that there are secondary phenomena of recrystallization so there is an increasing of crystallinity from concentric bands to horizontal bands there is more quartz secondary quartz and this uh, secondary because it, it makes some kind of small geodes um, the horizontal bind banding are more white. Why they are more crystalline if they are formed by mm, the S1 that is the less crystalline? But this is normal because it is the result of the dilution. So if um, an input of water enters in the cavity uh, can transform mm, the portion that is more colloidal can transform it in more diluted solution but the portion that is just crystalline like quartz and fibrous cannot be dissolved so this portion is diluted and can recrystallize so all what happened here is recrystallization of what have been dripped from the wall so this is all secondary bands there is no relation from the bands the bands that are on the top of the cavity and what and the banding that are formed uh, again in this portion. And if we look inside between the band of the horizontal banding, we can see some quartz portion, and this is cre clearly secondary because it's a geode. It's not a band. If it was a band, all the crystal was pointing on toward the top but in this case all the crystals are pointing toward the center of this shape so this crystal go down and this crystal go up so this is secondary is a recrystallization and this is uh, due to the dilution that is responsible to the formation of horizontal banding if we look to uh, a uh, nugget that is common found in market mm, a dye agate from from Brazil uh, when you dye an agate um, the color uh, can uh, fill only the globular chalcedony that is where, he, where is uh, purple but uh, where uh, there is more crystalline chalcedony is it, the color cannot enter and we can see that all the real horizontal banding take no color so this is consisted is formed by fibrous chalcedony secondary recrystallized quartz and other kind of more crystalline material so we can now mm, resume our form um, um, a sequence of band the sequence of band is the three step uh, globular fibrous and quartz so the first step is that the rain filled the cavity the nodule here is uh, in, in isolated from the earth rock for by the first chalcedony layer so the solution flow very slow into the cavity we we st stay in a closed system um, Evaporation increase the concentration of silica and transform it in a colloidal solution. Um, this colloidal solution is a trap for silica 
because when silica is inside the cloud, the solution cannot go out, cannot evaporate. So only water evaporate. And every year, new input or solution mm, put uh, uh, silica inside the cavity, but cannot uh, bring it out. So um, at the beginning of uh, crystallization of the chalcedony start to uh, stick a kind of jelly uh, uh, colloidal uh, chalcedony that stick to the cavity is the globular chalcedony uh, subtracting this silica from the solution make the solution more diluted and then the second step is that start to crystallize fibrous chalcedony and uh, at the end, when the solution is almost completely diluted, um, we, we have uh, crystallization of quartz. When uh, quartz start to crystallize, any further uh, intrusion of new solution mm, is taken from the quartz uh, for grow the crystals. So if there is a low entering of new silica in new water solution all the silica is here uh, go directly on the top of the quartz for make again a colloidal solution we have to go back so we have to dry completely the, the cavity you have to fill again with new solution and tra transform it in a colloidal solution so uh, the presence of quartz is uh, the end of the sequence for sure because uh, the crystal is uh, like a trap for the atoms of silica so any new atoms is taken on the face of the crystals and uh, the diluted solution cannot transform in a colloidal solution without pass again from all the step so the 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 sequence of the three um, three band is a seasonal uh, cy cycle from wet to dry so this cycle is a, a season uh, a rainy season or uh, just a, a rainy event event so just one day of of rain and one or few day of dry in sun but it is more probably that all the cycle is the result of one year so this is probably the result of the water table they go up fill all the cavity and then slowly go down leaving the cavity uh, uh, like closed system so for understand how what happened inside the cavity we can take the example of a coconut um, the coconut uh, contain a liquid uh, in which there is a protein that is a polymer the protein uh, make this liquid very dense and uh, um, and is a kind of colloidal solution and when the water is subtracted from this system that is a more or less closed system um, the, the fruit use the water or just the dry the, the sun eat and evaporate the water um, the liquid mm, uh, is less so the cavity start to separate a, um, a jelly material that stick on the wall of the cavity if you never try to eat uh, a kind of coconut like this you can eat this with a spoon and this a uh, very good uh, stuff with a jelly consistency and in the center there is a very dense water uh, full of the protein at the end of the maturing of the coconut um, the water is totally absorbed and the, the jelly material um, transform in a fibrous uh, stuff that look like uh, very similar to the fibrous calcedon 
So um, you can imagine something similar uh, happen inside uh, the cavity. So it's not necessary that all the cavity is transformed in a full, uh, complete wall mass of gel, but uh, because uh, the co a colloidal solution is by definition not uniform. So um, a, a nitrous solution is uniform if a percent of solute inside, but uh, the colloidal solution can have a strong change um, in a very narrow space. So we can have some very dense stuff uh, stick it to the wall and more liquid uh, solution in the center of the wall. This is not uh, a nugget, but uh, can be interesting to to compare for have an idea of what happened in a more or less closed system with a colloidal solution inside.